we are going to start in a minute okay we are here today good morning everybody welcome to my healing meditations i have the pleasure to prepare during the week and today we have an exciting subject we are going to explore the goddesses who show with and spin so we are going to explore the creativity in the divinities and also we are going to honor our ancestors that probably they had been sewing and spinning and weaving because there was no other choice until all this last 40 50 years so um, as always, I am going to start with a healing meditation, purification. I think it's always is very important to, to connect with ourselves, to release uh, traumas, tensions, conflicts that we have been accumulated in our body, mind and heart, and sometimes it creates blockages. So... Even though sometimes we can clear everything, but at least a little bit just to feel better. And slowly, slowly, because in life we need to do everything in, in the flow. And sometimes it's better to have the results um, in a long term, no, in a short term, as we are going to learn that sewing women and spinning needs patience okay so i am going to prepare soon for the people who are with me in zoom and i have prepared a presentation with images that i am going to share um, with all of you the ones that you are with me in zoom right as i said welcome everybody to we are going to start now with the goddesses who saw a spin and wave and as always we are going to start with the healing meditation let's go sit down comfortable back straight close your eyes and we are going to breathe in Breathe out deeply three times to start. Let's go. And again. Last time. Very good. And now we are going to focus in our face, mouth, nose, eyes. We are going to put our awareness there. And we are going to release any frustrations, any anger that make us be tense. To open the channels for our breathing better. And to take off all this tiredness of our eyes, working too much, watching the screens. Let's go. Breathe in and breathe out to release all these things from our body, mind, aura. Let's go. And again. Every time we are breathing in and breathing out, we are releasing and we are feeling free and relaxed. And you are going to feel how your body is going to start being lighter and lighter. Well done. We move now to our brain, to our neurons, these billions and billions of neurons that they are working every second since we were born. So how old are you now? 
You don't need to command to your neurons to think, to question yourself, or to command to move your right hand, for example. We have a perfect machine that we need to be careful, we need to honor it. Let's go, breathe in and breathe out. <sighs> to improve our neurons, to let them work free without any blockages. And again. <sighs> You can feel the energy now, you can feel lighter. Perfect, it's working very well. Okay, so now we are going down a bit and we are going to our throw, our neck, very delicate, our neck and our throw. Our throw, our tool of communication and our neck, it connects our body with our head. Okay, so first we are going to move very gentle our neck, very, very gentle, it's our neck. Okay, everything we do to ourselves, we do it with love. And sometimes we need to forgive ourselves, and maybe it's harder than to forgive the other. Remember that. Our throat as well is our tool of expression, how we express ourselves to the others. So as well, it's important to have clear, clear this area, and then we can learn to be more assertive. So we are going to vibrate our throat and at the same time, all our body with a sound. And the sound is the universal sound, OM. Let's go to vibrate. OM. Again. Last time. Oh. Beautiful. Can you feel how your all cells vibrate to your sound? Yes, but we need to continue. We need to clear all our body and aura. So we are going to focus now in our arms, elbows, wrists, hands. Yes, because <clears throat> with our hands, with our little hands, we can do many things. As today, we can sew, we can spin, we can weave, we can be creative. So we are going to honor the creativity in our hands. Breathe in and breathe out to release any blockages in your creativity, please. And to let your hands flow for whatever it comes to create for good. Can you feel the energy in your hands now? Energy is like heat. You can feel it. So this is healing energy now. So now with these beautiful hands, we are going to put under our stomach. Put them there, your beautiful hands now full of healing energy. And we are going to release now from all internal organs. We are going to get rid of sadness from our lungs, fears from our stomach, anger from the liver, 
sourness from the pancreas. Okay, and any blockages that doesn't flow as good with life from our inst instant stints. <laughs> Sorry, let's go. Let's go to get rid of the things and Mother Earth will recycle that. <sighs> Feel when you are breathing in and breathing out, you are releasing from all these internal organs. The sadness, the anger. Let's go again, my darlings. <sighs> Last time. <sighs> okay, remember that whatever I said, you have to do it in your own rhythm. So if you need it more, it's okay. If you need it less, it's fine as well. Okay? I am just guiding you, but it's you who is in charge of your body, your mind, and your soul so you are connected with it okay i am holding the energy here that's it right we continue with our beautiful healing hands now full of energy and now we are going to put them in our knees because we are going to release now from our legs knees foot and toes as I always said, they are very important to move forward in the future. So we need to get rid of all these fears and let it ourselves to trust. To trust the force of life, to trust God, to trust the universe. They are there protecting you, but just go with the flow. You are blocking yourself when you have all these fears and this self that, oh, can I? Oh, I can know. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we are doing all the time. Okay, me, my, myself as well. But we need to say, okay, I'm going to try. Of course, we need to think with the mind and to feel it with the heart. Okay, it has to be a balance. I am not saying just go to climb a mountain. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you know what I mean. Right, let's go. Breathe in and breathe out. To flow with life, to trust. Trust the universe that is helping us and protecting us. Now in the present and later in the future. Let's go. <sighs> And feel how your legs are becoming lighter. And maybe they are grateful with you for doing this. And again. <sighs> yes. <laughs> Get rid of this. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to put Kali's face as well. Kali's face is like. Bleh. Anyway. <laughs> Um, I don't know why I'm so playful today. Maybe it's because we are doing with the creativity. It's good, isn't it? Okay, last time to breathe in and breathe out from our legs, knees to just get rid of it. All these fears um, moving forward, happy in trust, in faith. <sighs> Be so beautiful. We are there, but we honor with this our body, we honor our mind, but now we are going to honor our soul because we are spiritual beings that we are in this body, living in these parameters of time and space. And we forget to connect with ourselves. So now is the time. Now this is for you. Yes, with your hands, put your hands in your heart and feel your soul. 
be connected with your soul. It's, you are your soul, but we need to connect. Sometimes we forget, and it's normal with our, our everyday lives, but don't forget even it's one minute per day, five minutes, it's okay. You don't need more. If you want to spend more time, it's good. But at least here. And to listen to yourself. To be in your presence. That's all. And this is enough. And this is enough forever. Some people run and run and run following the God of money, the God of power, but they are never here. And then are they happy? Are they fulfilling themselves? And the answer is no. But from here, Yes, you can use your power. You can use your money to make more money if you want to manifest. It's okay. But you started from here, from the beginning. <sighs> Beautiful, isn't it? It's nice to be here. It's nice to be at home. Okay. I leave you one minute. with yourself. And slowly, slowly, we are coming back. We are going to open our eyes, feeling blessed, feeling happy, feeling relaxed and we are we're continuing with this exploration about the goddesses of women spinning and sewing but first we are going to honor to our ancestors um because for example our our ancestors me myself I grow out with the noise of the sewing machine all the time because my mom was sewing, my aunties, they were sewing, they were making the clothes, they were making our clothes, they were making table clothes, everything. And even I remember my grandmother in her free time, she was spinning the shuttle. So probably you have some memories like this or maybe if you don't have, you can connect with your ancestors. Because until probably 40, 50 years ago, people, we were still mending our clothes. We were making our clothes. What happened now with this um, consumer, um, with this, um, what happened in the factories of China, you know, we, it's easy to buy clothes in in cheap price, but I don't know what is the price for the people in China. So I live it like that. I don't want to get there, but this is just honoring our ancestors. Remember your grandmother, remember your mother or, or your sister, that they are still making things, knitting, crocheting, um, everything. 
So we honor this. And as I said, if you don't have any memories of your mother or your auntie or your grandma doing this, just go back a little and connect with your great grandmother's then. We are going to start with the tools. Which tools we need for sewing and weaving and spinning? Uh, the popular ones was the scissors, the thimble, the needle, the thread, the sewing machine, the buttons, the, the <laughs> spinning wheel. Yes, but I am going to say something. Just with the scissors, the needle, the thread, as well, we can make magic. You know, the old witches, the people, all these women that they were called them witches, they were using things that they were in their everyday life, like the scissors. And me, I am still using them. For example, if I am doing healing and I have to cut some contracts, some bones that the people have with, with my family members or with places to do the healing. Sometimes we do it symbolically or sometimes we do it symbolically but with a proper scissors. Huh? So scissors is a powerful tool but it's the opposite as well. If we want to amend something we use the needle and the thread and remember the video I make about medieval magic, but I told you that women, well, even men as well, they used to show amulets and talismans in their clothes, in their multiple skirts that they were wearing. So is using tools with an intention so you can create magic. We are going to start our exploration with all these goddesses about with who saw wave and the spin. And we are going to start to in America because normally we are very Eurocentric here in Europe, well, in the UK. And we start always with old Greece, or, you know. And no, I'm going to start with America. Because in America, they are still women and spinning. We find in everywhere, well, most of the places, we find women sit down on the floor weaving and making beautiful creations. So we are going to explore first the Aztec goddess called Tla Solteold. La Solteol is a goddess that is not very popular. Not, not many people know her. Well, probably Mexico, yes. But, but normally we don't know about her. Well, she is the Aztec goddess of the spinning, knitting, and embroidery. And they know that as well because in the statues, in the figures who depict her, um, she has in, like, in her headdress the the spindles and the cotton yeah however trasolteol is not only the goddess the, the goddess of weaving and spinning like other goddesses we are going to explore today these goddesses they have other qualities other properties but we are going to find the common point to find out why so trasolteol is not only the goddess of weaving and spinning, it's also the goddess of fertility, giving birth, but these difficult um, births that, you know, until uh, probably 50, 60 years, women, they were dying in, in birth, giving birth. So this difficult um, birth, she was in church, Tlazolteol. However, she has the image, Tlazolteol, when the colonial missionaries, Spanish, they came to America together with the conquistadors, they, they have the perception that Tlazolteol, she was the goddess for adultery. But 
now with new documents and new researches, they are finding out that La Sol de Ol, she was the goddess of love, but love as marriage, love as fertility. Okay, so, but she has been still accused, the poor goddess of that. And, and also she is the goddess of rubbish. Well, I am going to explain it better. It's like she was cleaning, she was in charge to take off all the, um, all the rubbish from, from the houses. She was the cleaner, she was a goddess that she recycles like Mother Earth. So this is why she represented as well with a broomstick. Oh, what do you remember you? A woman, and probably an old woman with a broomstick. Ah, yes, exactly. Again, we have the old witch image in the collective consciousness. Interesting, huh? So now we move to this Maya after goddess called its shell. She's more popular, more people know about this child because she is the goddess of love and beauty. But it's different that Lasat go out because this child is the beauty, is just the love for love, like falling in love, like Aphrodite. That's all. But she is not a goddess that we can rely, we can call her for everyday purposes. La Tlasat Koal. Goddess is church, weaves as well, spins as well, and connecting, creating the universe. But again, I can say that each church is like Oxum in the Candomblé, or is like Aphrodite or Venus in the Greek Roman pantheons. And Tlaxalcoal is more like a Icate, it's a powerful goddess that you can rely on for good and for bad, not only to, to see the beauty in the world, to be beautiful, you know, that is important as well, to recognize the beauty. Okay, so nowadays, as I said, you can find women and men as well, you know, weaving and spinning around the whole America and it's beautiful. And they create beautiful clothes like this one I am wearing today. So we are still in America and we are going to learn now about a spider woman. A spider woman is a goddess <laughs> who is called a spider because he can transform in a spider. We are going to know why. I have been doing workshops in the past about a spider woman. So probably you know a little bit. Um, and we can find her from the Aztecs in Mexico to south, in the south of the USA, Navajo, Pueblo, and Hopi in Arizona, Colorado. Right, so why is that we can find her in all these areas? It's because they believe now as well that the Aztecs, it was one of these uh, tribes that they ran away in the four directions after a calamity um, um, and a, a dreadful event like a volcano eruption or an earthquake in in the Arizona, Colorado area where the Hopi lives. So they believe the Aztecs um, they, they came from the Hopis and because the evolution um, and the development of the whole America is starting from the Strait of Benin, the evolution started to going down to the Patagonia. So this is why Spider Woman, funny enough, we can find in all these ethnic groups and the Aztec civilization. Spider Woman, she's a creatrix. She spun a web and laced it with the morning dew. Then she throw it in the sky and the dew become the stars. And that she created the web of life where all of us, we are connected. The web of life. 
and we have been created artificially and it's called internet and this is why now you and me we are connected but when there was no this inter in artificial web we were connected as well telepathically and still we are okay still we are we are still connected in the same way even sometimes you don't believe it that is true so this is the beauty of the spider woman the spider web with the morning dew pure art and we can find a spider woman in all the handicraft in all these ethnic groups like in the in the spinning satchel in the jewelry in carpets and also in different mountains in archaeological sites we can find the drawings of the wet and i have to say as well that the inspiration for these superheroes and superheroines superman superwoman in marvel films hollywood films what do you think is coming is coming from the cosmology cosmovision of these ethnic groups so spider-man spider-woman what is it coming from our goddess spider-woman okay so we moved now from america we moved to asia and we found uh, the hindu goddess maya maya the goddess of illusion the goddess of dreaming the goddess that help us to to differentiate what is reality or what is the real reality anyway but my point here uh, is that goddess maya is as well related with the spider because she's in charge of the will of fate and if we move as the evolution has been coming india egypt now we are in egypt and we find a goddess that is called neat or Nif because this name means um, women as well and she's not only the goddess of waving is the goddess of war hunting and wisdom so as i said at the beginning we find these goddesses that they have not only the properties of weaving sewing they have another qualities like Nif, this egyptian goddess she's the goddess of war well it makes sense okay it makes sense because when you weave or you sew you have to create you have to think if you are going to create a garment a clothes you have to think beforehand how you are going to make it how is going to be the strategy which tools are you going to use which fabric and the way to make it also when we are sewing, weaving, we are creating. It helps us to get ideas to resolve problems about other things in our everyday lives. So this makes sense that in the meantime you are weaving, this goddess, you can find strategies for work and hunting. We move to ancient Greece. <clears throat> in ancient Greece, we have, as you know, um, we found all these uh, myths and mythologies uh, with Homer, the Iliad, and the Odyssey. Okay, we are going to start with this goddess Athena. Athena, she's the goddess of wisdom. Yes, 
but she was the goddess of weaving and spinning and sewing. And she was the superior one. And what happened? The, a princess, or a minor goddess called Aramner, she wanted to show as well. She wanted to be like her, like Athena. So she challenged her weaving. But Athena as well is the goddess of war before I forget. So, Aragne, she, she wove this tapestry, um, probably with better quality than Athena, and also probably sewing all these amorous adventures that the gods and the goddesses they were having. So, Athena got so angry maybe jealous that Arachne could make it better than her, or maybe because she was gossiping, that Athena made that Arachne hang herself. But after that, Athena felt pity, compassion. So what she did is she transformed the rope in a cobweb, and she transformed Arachne in a spider. And this is why we call, the Latin name to call the species of spiders is Arachnes. Arachne, Arachnes, Arachnides. Sorry, my English. Okay, um, and we continue in Ancient Greece, and we find the Morai. It has the free crowns that they were charged, they were church of the fate. So we have again that the goddess who weave is the goddess who creates the universe, who creates the world. So these free crowns, they control the destiny and they are spinning the thread of life. Here they are. And also we, we had to mention Penelope, Ulysses' wife. Do you remember that Penelope was the wife of Ulysses and Ulysses went to the Trojan world for 20 years and everybody thought that Ulysses was dead. So Penelope has many admirers that they wanted to marry her because she was a queen, but she, what she did is she from through the day she was waving and waving and during the night she was undoing it so when the admirers came they said sorry i had to continue with and when i finish probably i will think about getting married again so this is was her strategy waving during the day and and doing during the night. So the admirers, they were still there, yeah, stopping, bothering her. And then Ulysses returned after 20 years and they, they remained together forever and ever and ever. Beautiful, isn't it? And then we have Homero as well, that he emphasized the supernatural power of the women in the robes of the goddesses. And she put this example who Philomela, who was raped and her tongue cut off so that she couldn't tell about her violation, her loom becomes her voice and the story is told in the design so that her sister, Progne, could understand and the women could take their revenge. It's a strong story, but you can see that through the drawings and the embroidery, when, when goddesses saw, they can have meaning for other people to understand. And not only goddesses, and in all the countries, the embroidery means something. The embroidery, like 
we said in that carpet has the goddess spider but here in this picture in this portuguese fabric is is where women girls they were embroidering meaning of love for for their admirers or for their boyfriends or, or husbands when they were going to work they were doing these beautiful uh, handkerchiefs and just to to take them with them like a proof of love isn't it beautiful and if you uh, notice for example in the folklore all the textiles as well in the skirts in the blouses it has meaning and as i said in the beginning we can create magic as well um, and in the norse mythology we need to mention freaks that is not frida okay freaks is the wife of Odin, is the queen of Asgard, okay? And and one and her she is as well, she symbolizes as well with the spinning wheel, and because she's in charge as well of destiny and fate in the Norse mythology. So you can see her now in this image. And you can see like in all the cultures and traditions, women and spinning and sewing is related with creation, but not only creation about something material, is the creation of something bigger or deeper manifesting in your life. If we move to Germany and we find like in the fairy tales of Grimm, we have Frau Holda, is Holda, this godmother, goddess, um, fairy mother queen fairy that she was in charge of the women's fertility and protector of the unborn children and she's in control of the weather as well the weather as well i found in different goddesses that related to women as well they are in charge of the weather and we can find a fairy tale called the spindle, the shuttle, and the needle, where the prince followed the thread and he finds his princess. Beautiful, isn't it? And at last, I need to mention the Lady of Charlotte in from Avalon, from the magic island of Avalon. Why? Because she was as well, she was waving a tapestry. In the meantime, she was under the spell of Lancelot. Well, in the point of Tennyson, she was there in that tower because she was under the curse of an old woman. Do you remember her? And we have these beautiful pre raphaelites pictures of Lady of Salof weaving. Last, <clears throat> I am going to mention the, the saints, the patroness of seamstress weavers. There are many, so I only choose St. Anne, that is the patroness of seamstresses. San Claro de Sisi, she is the patroness of needlework. San Rosa of Lima, she is the embroidery patroness. So this is only a few saints that they are related with embroidery. There is a big list for all these handicrafts and creativity. You can find them and choose the one for you. And remember that the saints in Catholic Church, it was a way to assimilate and substitute the um, um, you know, a, a huge pantheon, some numerous gods and goddesses to become a monogamous religion that is one god. But at the same time, the saints help us to, to, to ask them for different things like we do with the pantheon of gods and goddesses. Remember this. So we can use the saints as well 
yeah, for our own purposes. So what were the similar qualities that we found in all these goddesses around the world? First, all of them, they are creatrix. They create the universe. They create the force of life. They are in charge of the will of fate, destiny, so they can make prophecies. They are in charge of fertility, of unborn children, uh, women having difficult given, difficulties giving birth, um, orphan children, all this kind of fertility, and it has to be with the everyday life and even cleaning. And also the weaving and work. But work, I don't like the, the, the word work, but we, it's important to refer, like if, for example, you have a problem, you want to resolve it. If you are in desperation, you are not going to resolve it. You need to be relaxed on how you can find relaxing with one way is with sewing, weaving, and spinning. Because reduces stress, is relaxing, and led to a steady heart rate and lower blood pressure because of the repetitive hypnotic movements. It helps concentration and coordination, supports creative thinking, so you can resolve other situations in everyday life, healthy mind, increases dopamine, develops patience, that nowadays is very important because everybody thinks that they can get, I don't know, they can be powerful, successful, rich in one day, and it's not like that, okay? And good self-esteem. And good self-esteem, why? Because if you have a little project, you start sewing, and if you finish it, you will feel so happy that you make something for yourself. And upcycling, because we can use old fabrics or we can play with the old clothes and to make cushions, for example. And, and in, at last, I would like to refer to this Spanish idiom that they refer that when you are sewing, when you start singing, no, when you start sewing, you are going to start singing. Es coser y cantar, solamente es empezar. So you just, just beginning with sewing, you will finish singing, and at the end, you just are in the flow of the thread, basically. So now, um, this brief introduction is finished. I have to say that this week I have been a lot of research on and I felt overwhelmed because I couldn't stop, fi stop finding things and there is more and more and more and more. So, you know, the goddesses of women are sewing, they are around all the world, okay? And we are goddesses. And now we are going to start the guided visualization to connect with these goddesses or whatever is coming. Let's go. Sit down or lay down, whatever you prefer. Close your eyes and we are going to breathe in and breathe out three times to come back. This relaxed state, this lighter state where we are just in our presence and feeling the unconditional love of Mother Earth. Very good. Very good. Last time. In your left side, you are going to visualize steps, stairs, that they are going to go down 
to another dimension. So let's go. We are going to start going down. 10. We are going to feel relax, lighter, and to be ready to travel. Eight, seven, with intention to connect with these divinities for our everyday life, for to have inspiration, unconditional love, and maybe a message that it can help us for our future. Six, five, we breathe in and breathe out again. Four. Almost there. Three, two, one. Okay, we arrived there. Um, now we are like in a big corridor. It's a bit dark, but there are torches. You can see perfectly. You, you are happy and full of energy, so you are running through the corridor. I don't know where exactly you want to go so quick, but you are running from these long corridors until you find a door, heavy medieval door made with wood and iron. And you can manage to open that big door and go to the other side. And when you are on the other side, you are in a beautiful green landscape, close to a forest, trees, is sunny and warm. You can hear the birds singing, the squirrels eating nuts, the bees in the flowers, and then you can see your zoos. Which shoes are you wearing? Who are you barefoot? Who are you? What are you wearing? Check. Check. And you are going to start, after this realization, you are happy anyway, you are going to start running from this landscape, going down to hills until you find a little village with thatcher cottages. And there, your granny is waiting for you. So you open the door of your cottage and your granny is there in the fire with the spinning wheel. And she's telling you off because um, you have been running and playing and, and you have to come to help her. And it's getting dark. And you say, well, I was playing with the dogs and the horses. So you sit down close to her and you are going to start spinning as well. Your grandma is tired, so she's going to make tea. So you sit down on the chair of the spinning wheel and you are going to start spinning the wheel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then all this hypnotic spinning is makes you to travel to another dimension with your soul. You are flying now, you are free in the universe. You are free in the planet. And now you are just energy. You are like an angel. You are like a fairy. Do you want to go to see anyone in your family? <clears throat> it doesn't matter the time and the space. You are just energy. Go. Go. And what they are doing? They are sewing, spinning, weaving. Or maybe you are in a past life reincarnation. Enjoy. Just enjoy. And go with the flow that they are taking you, these images of memories. 
in whatever you feel despair, put love and healing, change the vibe. Okay. I am picking up Egypt, so probably they are taking us this energy to ancient Egypt, in Egyptian temple, in Isis temple, and all these priestesses, they are weaving beautiful looms, beautiful fabrics, fresh with linen cotton to these beautiful dresses that Egyptian priestesses, high priestesses, they are wearing, even Isis, goddess Isis. You are one of them priestesses, sit down on the floor, weaving, And you are weaving your thread to lie. You are weaving your own fate. You are weaving your own destiny with that thread. Create whatever you want. Create whatever you need for your future. Do you want love? With two bears, with two people there together. Do you want money and power? Use the golden thread. If you want health, use the green half. Use green thread and use it to create a beautiful heart. If you need to flow with life, use the blue thread. You need to cut a situation, a band, or contract with someone who are bond. Cut the thread and amend it again with a different thread. Egyptian goddess Neith, goddess of women and war and hunting, she will check your women fabric. She approve it and she gives you the blessing. With Isis there, the big, powerful, majestic presence of Isis there. So you are in charge of your fate now, with your destiny. You are happy, you are grateful, you are blessed. And Isis and Goddess Neef, they push you. They push your soul that you come back immediately where you were sit down spinning the wheel and you are just wake up and keep spinning the wheel. Your granny comes with the tea and said, my dear darling, you didn't finish what I said. What you have to been doing? Have you been in another dimension? And she smiles and she knows. <laughs> Have tea, and both of you have tea there, very comfy in this beautiful cottage, close to the fire, and you stay there. 
the your granny receiving the unconditional love. And the granny is spider woman, mother earth. So it's time to come back, unfortunately. So we see the stairs there on our left. It's time to come back now, but you can go whenever you need. Okay, this is your cottage with your granny spider woman. So we start climbing up, going up. Ten, nine. We are going to start feeling our body. Seven, we are becoming more solid, more material, <laughs> more grounded and grounded. Seven, six, five, four, we touch our hands. We feel our toes. Four, three, two, almost there. When I said one, you are going to open your eyes. You are going to feel free, happy, and relaxed. And you, maybe you are going to write down all these experiences that you got. You are going to remember everything because I don't want you that you forget, okay? So one, you can open your eyes now. I think it was very beautiful. The energy is grounded, uh, very, um, how I say, I don't know, I don't have words. Pure love. Okay. Move your body a little bit, your shoulders very gentle, please. And we are coming back after this. You can have some, um, you can eat some snack, but you can drink water and then you will be more grounded for today. So um, I hope some easy ideas that you can start creating. Maybe you are already a professional SOA or a professional artisan, but just for the people to, be inspired I put these phot photographies like you can make simple projects like a cushion like pom-poms like a beautiful handbag or oh, now because we have to wear the max you can create your own mask even though it's just for your own project maybe they are no they don't have the protocol or it needs but at least you create something beautiful so and remember the essence of the goddess of creativity of sewing and knitting and weaving is everywhere even with men even hollywood astors stars they have been knitting what they have been waiting for the filming again and um, and also I have to mention my friend, my sister, that she has the fashion school in Brighton and Chelsea. She, she taught me to show in machine just in one morning. In one morning, moi, I was terrible with this thing, I learned to show in machine. So just a homage for her. Caroline and the fashion school in Brighton and Chelsea in the UK. This is the bibliography I have been using. And please follow me if you want in Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. Everything I am doing now is online, like my psychic readings, healing um, and courses and workshops. Everything is online. And remember, sewing mends the soul. Creativity is the heart's craft. Please enjoy creating. I hope um, you like this exposition of the goddesses. I hope I inspire you to 
to be creative with sewing, weaving and spinning. And see you next week here with another spiritual subject, maybe with another spiritual goddess of goddesses and to enjoy this time together and to feel better and to be better people to create a better world. Okay, my darlings, love you all. Bye bye. Arrivederci. Bye bye.